If you like comedy, action, and a badass but perverted protagonist, City Hunters, the movie for you. The original anime was released back in 1987 with a total of 51 episodes, and honestly speaking, it was a good anime. Well, on April 25th, 2024, this old anime got a live-action adaptation for the big screens, directed by Yuichi Sato and distributed by none other than Netflix. Yeah, there's always that worry when they turn a beloved anime into a live-action flick. But let me tell you, the City Hunter live-action didn't disappoint. It didn't destroy the reputation of the original at all. In fact, it was pretty cool seeing Ryohei Suzuki breathe life back into Ryo Saiba. It was like revisiting an old friend in a new, exciting way. Now, let's take a look into some questions that people might have after watching the movie. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What is the Netflix film about? The story of City Hunter starts when a young woman walks into a Tokyo restaurant, desperate to find her missing sister, Kurumi. There, she meets our protagonist, Ryo Saiba, and his sidekick, Hideyuki Makimura both being private investigators. While Makimura is sincere about helping, Ryo, on the other hand, is actually charmed by the woman's beauty and, uh, well, melons, and agrees to take on the case. Their search leads them to Kurumi, held captive by gangsters. Well, Ryo's fighting and sharp shooting skills help them defeat the thugs, but Kurumi refuses the help and escapes. Despite their pursuit, she escapes them with extraordinary jumps. However, Makimura finds mysterious blue vials at the scene dropped by Kurumi. Later, Makimura plans to reveal to his stepsister, Kaori, that they're not biologically related. But before he can, tragedy strikes as a truck crashes into the restaurant, injuring him. And then the driver steps out from the truck and attacks Makimura and ultimately stabs him multiple times. Ryo reaches the restaurant, but he's evidently late. Makimura asks Ryo to take care of Kaori before finally passing away. Determined to uncover the truth behind her brother's death, Kaori insists Ryo help her. And so, the journey of mystery and vengeance begins. What is the blue liquid in the vials? So, those blue liquids are actually the whole reason this story kicks off. Makimura first finds them after Kurumi drops them, and before he dies, he hands them off to Ryo. But here's the kicker. Even before they crack open those vials, the movie gives us a taste of what they can do. When Kurumi's trapped by Makimura and Ryo in their first encounter, suddenly these big blue veins start popping up around her neck. Next thing you know, she's pulling off some seriously impossible moves and giving the slip to our detective duo. It's a real eye-opener to the power those vials pack. The next time we see this enhancement in action is when Makimura meets his end. He gets taken out by someone who's like a stone-cold robot. No feelings, no pain. Makimura stabs the guy in his shoulder, but it's like he's unfazed. Instead, he just pulls the knife out and starts stabbing Makimura over and over. This kind of weird stuff had been going down in Shinjuku for about a month, with folks pulling off crazy feats that just ain't normal. So, Ryo hands over the sample to Seiko Nagami, a cop he's tight with. She sheds some light on the whole creepy situation. Turns out, the folks behind these weird incidents were mostly lonely souls, no family or friends to speak of. What's even weirder is that they end up dead themselves sometime later, like they killed themselves out of the blue. Case in point, the guy who killed Makimura, yep, he's found dead in an alley not long after. All the deceased suspects had traces of the liquid in their bodies. She tells Ryo that the liquid directly messes with their brains, giving them superhuman strength. It also turns them into violent, aggressive monsters, explaining their rampage. But here's the twist. Once the drug wears off, they die. They weren't taking their own lives. The drug was actually doing the dirty work. Putting the pieces together, Ryo connects the dots. That blue liquid must be Angel Death, a scientifically engineered potion he'd heard about before. In the world of City Hunter, Angel Death is like a serum that turns regular folk into super aggressive, efficient fighters. Ryo explains that it was originally cooked up for warfare, injected into someone, and they'd go berserk. No guilt, no empathy, just pure rage. But governments and institutions banned it ages ago, deeming it too brutal. Yet, someone's been playing with it, making it even stronger and spreading it around Shinjuku. Why is Kurumi being searched for? This movie's packed with little twists and turns. Remember how Kurumi was ambushed by thugs at the beginning? Then boom! She's got these crazy powers. But here's the thing, she didn't end up like the others. Why not? Well, turns out she's a special case. She's the only one who managed to survive the supercharged angel death. So, Ryo takes on the mission to find Kurumi and reunite her with her sister. Despite Ryo's reluctance, Kaori insists on joining him, driven by the desire to avenge her brother's death. Little did they know, Kurumi holds the key to both their missions. 
Initially, it seemed like Kurumi was involved with the people behind the drugging incidents, but it turns out she's actually a victim herself. She shares her harrowing experience with Ryo and Kari. It dawns on Ryo why she was being targeted. Kurumi reveals she has no living relatives, including no elder sister. This means the woman who hired Ryo and Makimura at the start of the film wasn't actually related to Kurumi at all. Kurumi instead led a pretty solitary life, finding solace in her online fame as a cosplayer and her small circle of friends. But when her close friend Kento vanished without a trace, she grew worried and set out to find him in the area he'd last been seen. That's when trouble found her. A group of men in black suits grabbed Kurumi and took her away to a shady medical lab. Inside, she witnessed a disturbing sight. People trapped in glass chambers, clearly drugged and acting wild. Among them was her friend Kento. But before she could intervene, a man in a lab coat injected her with a syringe, knocking her out cold. When she woke up later, she noticed her face's nerves turning bluish-black. But despite being injected with the serum, Kurumi managed to keep her senses and she escaped the lab. Not only that, she stole two vials of angel death as evidence of her abduction. But here's where it gets interesting. Unlike the others, Kurumi didn't go off the deep end with violent rage, nor did she bite the dust once the serum wore off. Instead, she retained her superhuman abilities, like insane jumping skills, without turning into a wrecking ball of chaos. And that's why the people behind this angel death plan were looking for her, including the woman who hired Ryo, as she was also a part of the villainous gang. Who are the perpetrators behind the angel death plan? As City Hunter unfolds, we learn that the masterminds behind the Angel Death Scheme are none other than Union Teopi, a shady organization hailing from Central America. These guys have built their empire through all sorts of dirty dealings and downright cruel acts over the years. Now they're sitting pretty with a tight grip on the global economy. Driven by that age-old greed for more cash, Union Teopi didn't bat an eye at the ban on Angel Death. They just kept on tinkering with it, dreaming of the day they could cash in big time. But the fact that an American company's pulling these strings in Japan might raise some eyebrows. But hey, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there where cash rules everything. And in this cutthroat capitalist landscape, anyone can be bought if the price is right. So, Union Teopi's angel death operation was spreading like wildfire throughout Shinjuku, thanks to a Japanese cosmetics company called Lore, acting as its local arm. Moreover, in a world where looks rule supreme, with even cosplaying having a big impact on people's personalities, finding targets was easy peasy. The CEO of Law was in on the scheme, luring Kurumi into a trap with a cosplay event, but she soon learns the hard way just how ruthless her bosses are. She was disposable once Kurumi was captured, and Union Teopi's big guns wasted no time killing her. But even beyond Law, Union Teop's reach was so vast that they even had senior cop Ito in their pocket. How did Ryo Saiba and Kaori save Kurumi? Once Kurumi gets snatched by Yuni and Teo, Ryo finally caves and lets Kaori join him for the big finale. <laughs> and let me tell you, it's a wild ride. They storm the Law Tower, and it's a full-blown shooting showdown with Ryo facing off against over 50 thugs. But hey, <laughs> this is Ryo we're talking about. He manages to outsmart them all and come out on top. But just when things seem to settle down, the main boss brings Kurumi as a hostage and tries to recruit Ryo into the Union. Well, you can guess how that goes down. Ryo rejects the offer in true style, showing he's not one to be messed with. But before Ryo can face off with the main boss, a formidable thug named Brown Bear, juiced up on the Angel Death Serum, steps in and goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Meanwhile, Kurumi is taken to the rooftop, with Kari chasing after them. It's up there that Kari learns a shocking truth about her past. Her father was also a test subject for Uni and Teop's experiments, and Makimoda's dad had to put him down when he went off the deep end. Turns out, Kari isn't blood-related to either of them. She was adopted by Makimoda's dad after her real dad was killed by Uni and Teo. Talk about a bombshell. In the heat of the confrontation, just as Kari grapples with this revelation, Ryo swoops in after defeating Brown Bear. He takes a shot at the main boss, saving Kurumi. Kari's torn, wanting revenge and points a gun at the injured boss. But she fails to cross her own moral line by shooting him. In the end, Ryo steps in and finishes the job, wrapping up the mission once and for all. Does Ryo Cyber solve the case? The movie wraps up with Ryo victorious in the immediate battle, but the bigger war against the Angel Death Project's mastermind remains unsolved. While he may have won this round, there are still loose ends to tie up, leaving the door wide open for sequels. Ryo's journey is far from over, and there's plenty more detective work and action-packed adventures on the horizon. So, while this chapter may be closed, the story is far from finished. Who's the real villain? In City Hunter, things don't quite follow the usual script of having one big bad guy calling the shots. 
Even in the anime that inspired the movie, there's not always just one villain to contend with. Depending on the story arc, you get a whole mix of them. This movie zeroes in on the Angel Death drug arc, though it doesn't cover every detail. What we do see is that the Union takes center stage as the main villain. They put a spotlight on one bus, but here's the kicker. They never even give us his name. It's all part of the mystery that keeps us hooked on the edge of our seats. Is Rio done being a sweeper? The answer to this question is a big no. See, the drug stuff is just scratching the surface of Rio Cyber's story. The anime is packed with all sorts of acts, and there are plenty more bad guys waiting to make their debut. So, rather than thinking Rio's done sweeping up trouble, we should be saying he's just getting warmed up. There's a whole world of adventure out there for him to tackle. A new partnership on the horizon. So, a few days roll by after Kurumi's rescue and the bad guy's defeat, and Kaori heads over to her brother's grave to pay her respects. And get this, Kurumi's back in action as a cosplayer, and she's totally killing it. It's a little update that shows life moving forward for our heroes after all the chaos. Then we see Ryo enjoying a nice snooze, only to wake up to Kaori buzzing around his place with a vacuum. And get this, she's gone and cleared out his babe's collection, and he's talking about moving in. Talk about a wake-up call. But hey, this moment marks the start of their new partnership. Carrie's pulling out all the stops to convince Rio to team up, but he's his usual stubborn self. We all know he'll come around eventually, though. And get this, she even busts out that iconic giant cosplay hammer and starts chasing him around until he gives in. We don't get the answer, but well, it's obvious for the ones who have watched the anime that the two will become partners. Oh, did I uh, forget to give a spoiler alert? <laughs> well, my bad. What about the Union and Angel Dust? Now, the only thing left to discuss is what's up with the Union and Angel Dust. Well, the movies left out a few things from the anime and rushed through a few parts. But hey, we still get the gist of what the Union's all about. And here's the twist. Even though we wrapped up with the big boss, it's pretty clear the Union's still kicking. Turns out, that final boss was just a small fry. As long as the Union's still around, you can bet that blue liquid drama isn't going anywhere. So yeah, a sequel's practically begging to happen, and fans are already hyped for it. Plus, we've barely scratched the surface of Rio's backstory, so you know they've got more up the sleeves for the next one. Looks like they've set the stage pretty nicely for what's to come. Marvelous verdicts. Overall, despite leaving a lot of the story untold and skipping over some details, the live-action adaptation still managed to wow the audience. It felt like a love letter to fans of the 80s anime. You can't help but wonder if adding an extra 20 to 30 minutes could have bumped up its IMDb rating of 6.5 out of 10. Hmm. Now, waiting for the next installment is a bit frustrating, but there's hope that it'll paint an even clearer picture of what City Hunter is all about. So, for now, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.